Alright, so the first part of installing the distributor is having the tape, the upper end take off. So we're going to start by removing some components to hold the intake on and then we'll actually start to lift the intake off. First on the list, I'm going to go ahead, which I've already done, 13 millimeter socket, remove the EGR tube. Uh, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Like I said, I already removed it, but that's got to come off. Right, for the next part, we're going to remove the exhaust manifolds. There's six bolts, two on either end and two in the middle. I've already removed the top and bottom here. I'll remove the top and bottom on the end here. They are a 13 millimeter socket. Do the same for the other side, minus the EGR. Next, we're going to loosen the fuel rail lines brackets. I've actually already done that. That also is an that's an eight millimeter. That I've loosened as well. Eight millimeters. Comes that. Next, we have to pull the coolant lines for the intake, which aren't usually that easy, but man, was that easy. All right, now we're gonna pull the fuel lines. Uh, I guess first we'll also pop off the PCV valve and uh, any other miscellaneous hoses that you might have connected that may make a difference. Since this engine's removed, I don't have to do much more else. You're going to need a 10 millimeter socket with a slight extension, be helpful. And we're going to take one bolt, then you're going to remove the top screw to take, holds this harness clip down. Underneath that is one more. Alright, once you pull that, the injector should come out. Actually, there. Fan temperature switch. Once you get that clipped out, out comes the injectors. Next, take 10 millimeter. You're going to take eight more bolts out from the upper plenum. I've already loosened them. Kind of make this go a little faster. Once you get them loose, as long as everything is removed, you should be able to pull up on it. it may take some prodding. But as long as everything comes out, the difference between the Fiero intake and the Camaro one the distributor cap would actually get in the way of the intake system, so it doesn't work. The other reason is Fiero's intake actually points that way. So two differences on why we don't use this intake. One is because of direction, and the other is because the distributor actually won't fit with this intake on it. 
All right, now we're going to have to remove both of the valve covers because they actually block the removal of the lower intake. We actually have to remove the lower intake because when we set the distributor down in its place, it's actually going to cover over top of the lower intake. So we need to make sure we get the Fiero lower intake on before we put the distributor in. Now I'm not going to do it because the intake system that I'll be using is actually still in the car. And the car still runs. So I haven't yet pulled the motor. So I'll have a little backtracking to do. But for now, we will go ahead and remove the valve covers. Then we're going to remove the lower plentum and then we're ready to put the distributor in. Alright, now to remove the valve covers, we're going to use a deep 10 millimeter socket. There are six bolts going all the way around. Shouldn't really take too much effort to get them out. So that takes that off, just do the same for the other side. Alright, now we're going to take the lower plentum out. To start, we're going to need two different sockets. Right now we're going to use a deep 13 millimeter socket to take the outer four out. Now to take the inner bolts, I believe there are six of them, we're going to use a 10 millimeter. And there we have it, the lower intake's out. All right, now what we gotta do is we gotta move the flywheel and harmonic balancer to top dead center. As you can see here, this is the notch, and we're going to use an 18 millimeter socket, and we're basically going to crank this up to its top dead center. All right, I believe top dead center is in alignment with the, I believe this is a crankshaft position sensor, but right there is about where you'd find top dead center on cylinder one. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the distributor cover from the 3.4 liter engine. With that, you'll need a 15 millimeter socket, and we'll go ahead and remove that. I have an assistant today. It might be a little tight, but it'll loosen up real quick. Put it in a safe place so you don't lose it. In case yeah. you can't do what you want to do and you want to revert it back. 
Now we're going to use some locking pliers and you're going to lift up gentle persuader to break it free. Love that persuasion. <laughs> if needs be. Should turn easily, but it's a matter of, uh, there you go. Lifting it up, might be a little bit stuck. First start, but little taps, little muscle, comes right out. And this is what it looks like. Actually acts as a distributor, even though there's not really one in there. Now that we found top dead center, what we're going to do is we're going to install the distributor. This is an A1 Cardone. Uh, has a little better and more updated coil. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to find, we're going to point the distributor rotor towards cylinder number one. Cylinder number one on a cap is this one on the left, this point. So what we need to do... The flat spot. Yeah, the flat. Yeah, from the flat point on the, on the cap, uh, the point on the left is cylinder number one. So what we're going to do is put the cap or, or the rotor on there and then we're going to sit it in there so that uh, the rotor points to what would be the equivalent of cylinder number one uh, spark plug wire. Now on the A1 Cardone they actually were nice enough to put a marking to line it up there and there as to what cylinder number one would be. Now when you actually set it in because of the spiral gearing when you set it in it's going to spin so you actually have to uh, move it back a little bit and have it rotate into place. How it be positioned? We want to kind of have it positioned at a 45 degree. You don't want it at a hard 90 either way because it'll be in the way of the ignition coil which sits here or the throttle body which sits here. So you want to kind of sit it here. If you have the injectors or the intake and everything, it makes it a little easier. But in my case, it's a bare block. And as we can see here, if you look closely at the distributor on this, you can see that, maybe, maybe not, but that's the flat side right there. And it's kind of coming at a 45 between the intake and the ignition coil. So we don't want it dead on, but that's about where it should be positioned. So now we're going to fit this. And to get it to set in, you just start spinning the rotor. And that's overkill. So we've got to anticipate a little bit more. Perfect. All right, a little closer up, you can see the distributor. There's the points, and there's the marker that uh, the AC or the A1 Cardone has. And if you look dead on, it's spot on. All right, and the last thing you'll do once you get your distributor in and set is you actually want to take that. Uh, clamp that we removed for the, the cap and we're going to reuse that to hold down the distributor and that uses a 15 millimeter socket so we'll go ahead and set that in get it clamped down so it won't move And there you have it. That has uh, that's how you put the distributor in. Um, and as I mentioned before, you actually want to do it with your intake in and your valve covers. But 
my case, the engine's still in the other car, so this is just for demonstrational purposes. Um, I'll actually have to redo this again when I'm ready to put the intake in. But there you have it. Putting in a distributor for a 3.4 motor for Fiero.